Let us pray. Holy God, as we come before your, your word today, may we be open and receptive to what it is that you are speaking to each one of us. Amen. Home. The place we rest, the place we are loved, the place we long for. It can be a physical building, a hometown, an apartment, a beach, or maybe in the arms of someone we love. Home. Over the next six weeks, we are going to be journeying together through a new worship series called Emerging from Exile Towards Home. After 18 months in a pandemic, things seem to be on the up and up. Things seem to be changing. We seem to be emerging. Schools and workplaces are opening, and soon our own church building, the sanctuary that I am in, will be open. We are regaining a bit of hope for the future as we emerge. But what will we emerge into? Not only who will we personally become, but what kind of society will we emerge into? Are we emerging from our exile towards home? Some of us have spent more time at home than we ever imagined, and yet that doesn't mean that it's always felt safe or a space where we are loved and accepted for who we are. Our communities, our country, is more divided than ever. We know that we can't go back to the way things were, that that time, that that home of the past is no more. We've lost something. We've lost people. We have been lost. And it's not the only loss we've had this COVID time. Yesterday marked 20 years since the atrocities of September 11th, 2001. And for many who were alive at that time, we can remember the exact moment we heard what was happening. We lost friends. We lost loved ones. We lost a sense of safety. And then there's everything else that's been going on in your life. The losses, tragedies, and even the traumas of your own story. All of us have been in exile in some form or fashion. And so as we emerge, what do we do with all that has happened? How do we process the traumas? And what does our faith do for us in this time? For some of us, we want to sweep it under the rug and act like it didn't happen. It's a normal coping mechanism, and for a while, it works. And for some of us, it's been needed. It's the only way that we could react to the grief and the trauma. And yet we know, like cleaning a home, that sweeping things under the rug only lasts for so long. It only gives us temporary relief. It's always there, unresolved, holding us captive in our minds, in our imaginations, and even in our bodies. As Christians, we were not created for captivity. We were created for freedom. Our faith tells us that Jesus Christ has come to set us free, to give us new life in the spirit. Jesus Christ, the one who preached to a Jewish people whose homeland was occupied by a Roman state. Jesus Christ, whose own heritage as a Jew and whose very own scriptures included the imagination and the stories of the Babylonian exile, where Jews were taken away from their homes, deported to a foreign land. Jesus Christ, the one who was betrayed by his closest friends, unlawfully sentenced to death and killed. Jesus Christ, who raised from the dead and through his resurrection, boldly proclaimed the captivity of any kind, even death, does not have the final word. 
Jesus Christ, who had traumas of his own and lived among a traumatized people, told his followers that he came to bring life to the fullest, life everlasting, life that brings freedom in this world. This life everlasting doesn't come by sweeping things under the rug. Our faith, our tradition, our God guides us in our grief, leading us to transformation that allows us not just to survive in hardships, but to find a path towards thriving. We have all gone through a terribly difficult time in the pandemic, along with everything else in our lives. Our faith not only helps us get through the tough times, but it allows us to experience God in the midst of it, in the moment, right where we are. As Richard Rohr says, faith is not, first of all, for overcoming obstacles. It is for experiencing them all the way through. And so that's what we're going to be doing over the next few weeks. That is what we are called to do as followers of Jesus Christ, to move all the way through our obstacles, looking for and, it's, and experiencing God in the midst of them. So over the course of the next few weeks, we will move through scriptures based on exile. We will practice spiritual disciplines to help us move through this process of emerging. We will seek guidance from our Wesleyan quadrilateral of scripture, tradition, reason and experience as we honestly engage with our lives, our stories, and our God, moving onwards towards transformation and freedom, moving slowly and methodically, not skipping over the difficulties to jump to the end, but by moving all the way through the obstacles. And at times it will not be easy, but transformation rarely is for us to really grow, for us to really find the freedom we want so badly, for us to experience God in our midst, we need to get into the journey, even if it's long. And thankfully, we don't journey alone. And before we get too far into this, I want to be clear that in this time, there may be emotions and memories that are difficult to hold and possibly even traumatic. If you are wanting to, to seek help or need some help in resources for your spiritual and mental health, know that I am here. Ashley is here and the full pastoral staff of our PUMC, KUMC team is here for you. For if we really believe in Jesus Christ's words, in this life everlasting being offered to us in this life, then we are invited to walk the walk to live into the transformation and freedom Jesus offers. So let us turn now to Ezekiel, to our passage today. Ezekiel was a prophet and a priest in exile. And as our text shows, he is someone who is just coming into this time. He displays shock, denial, grief. Because first came the Assyrians and then the Babylonians, ransacking and setting a siege on the town until their power and their reign overcame the Jews. People were deported to a new land, plucked from their home country and moved to a new place. Ezekiel was among them. Ezekiel may have started out in Jerusalem as a priest, but after the siege by the Babylonians, he's carried off and exiled to Babylon. In a foreign land, outside the temple, outside of the holy city, God shows up in his midst. In the time of exile, God reveals God's self to him. And Ezekiel's exile isn't just one of land, but also the loss of his people. He's exiled on two fronts, in shock, stunned, silenced, sitting for seven days with no words. And the scripture says his tongue clinged to the roof of his mouth. 
How often has our journey sounded like this? How often in our lives, in our own traumas, have we felt silenced, having no words for what is happening, trying to make sense of our experience, unsure where God could be? Our journey towards healing like Ezekiel starts with shock and silence. It works in us and it works on us. Do we fight it? Do we flee it? Or do we freeze in the midst of it? As many of you know, one of the roles I get to serve in is as the Methodist chaplain on campus of Princeton University. And a little over a week ago, I met with the other chaplains for our first in-person meeting since March of 2020. We remembered how the last time we gathered together in person in that same room in the Office of Religious Life, 18 months ago, we cracked jokes about and moved our chairs farther apart, you know, just as a precaution. We had no idea what was coming. Even just in recalling that memory a week and a half ago, all of us were silenced and stunned. I remember leaving that meeting 18 months ago and going out to meet most of our college students for a dinner. We went to Taqueria and then we sat outside and ate. And in that time, we all got the email from the university saying that they were shutting down and sending students home. ASAP. I didn't know what to do. Here I am supposed to be the chaplain. And while I was physically present with people, I was frozen inside. I didn't know how to respond. Because I hadn't even fully grasped what was going on. I was in shock. And so, yes, we went to go get ice cream and we shared how much we love being with one another and we took photos that look so happy. We said goodbyes. But even in that time, because of my frozen shock, my goodbyes barely conveyed the love that I had for the people that I was with. None of us knew what was coming. As a nation, I believe that we have large amounts of unprocessed grief. Over the past few months, as things have seemed to get better, we have tried to jump straight back into some semblance of normal living. But I'm confident that we have not done the deep reflection of truly becoming healthy and free. And this includes me. I think this includes our pastoral staff. Rather than coming to you with a topic that's fully been processed in my head and my heart, and then spending time preaching on it, we, your pastoral staff, are in the midst of this too. We are all on this journey of reflection. We are all emerging from our exiles and yearning for a home. We all are needing to open ourselves up to receive God's love in order to be transformed. If we, all of us, are to go the way of Jesus, if we are to seek the freedom that Jesus offers, we need to start where Ezekiel starts in the darkness in the space where he finds himself, in the space where our mouths feel shut, and it's as if only God can open them. Because when shock happens, we may think it's only something in our head or in our heart, but we forget that shock can often work within our bones, within our bodies, the tension taking its toll on our muscles. It's found inside of us we can become disconnected from our bodies. Scientists have picked up on this. It's why breathing exercises have become more commonplace. 
Breathing is the simplest of actions that reminds us that we are alive. Through breathing, we, we reconnect with our body. Like the Holy Spirit flowing through us, breathing into those first humans in Genesis, it reminds us that God is with us now. That God's Spirit is within us in this very moment with each inhale and exhale. When times of shock happen in our life, when grief overwhelms us, when the control we thought we had is ripped from our hands, when our tongues are stuck to the roofs of our mouths and it feels like we cannot speak, what we can do is breathe and pray. Reconnecting with the life that God has given us reconnecting to the body that God has given us, reconnecting to our faith, experiencing God in the midst of our lives through our breath so that we can move all the way through our obstacles. And so we start here with our breath. As we close, I'm going to invite us into a time of a breathing exercise. A breathing exercise that also includes prayer. As we inhale, we can say, loving creator. And as we exhale, grant me your peace. Let us do that a few more times. Loving creator. Grant me your peace. Loving creator. Grant me your peace. Loving creator. Grant me your peace. Amen. Now let us sing the same song that you heard for our intro. Lord, listen to your people praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace.